What's up everyone, my name is Bob Loon, aka Pam Loon, and today I am featuring or re reacting to the 7.2 patch notes that we just got released today. Um, and yeah, I'm a little bit late, um, sorry about that, but luckily we do have other YouTubers ha that have, you know, been fast. I think Sly posted like right after we were allowed to, so if you've already seen this, it's fine. This is just my, you know, take on it. I'm pretty sure there's some awesome stuff to react to, so let's just get right into it. Now, this the big thing with 7.2 is the carrier spotting change. So, in response to our feedback, and for the sake of game balance, thank you, Wargaming, we've in implemented significant adjustments to the squadron vision function. So, I don't know if you guys remember back in, I think it was last year, I decided to make a video proposing a new change for spotting, and I don't know. It, it, I don't think it's these changes that I talked about, but it's just nice to see that spotting is getting something done here. So before, when squadrons were flying, there were no detection range indicators, and the detection logic relied on fixed distance circles. So we all know that little annoying circle on the map never really worked. This meant players couldn't see the detection distance of squadrons. So now, interface, we've introduced a vision range display comprising both sector and circle elements. Players now have the flexibility to combine these elements as desired, whether it's displaying only one circle, only a sector, or a combination of both. So it sounds like a plane is going to have a sector, like a square, where they can spot. And you can see that. And it seems like you can also change your interface uh, to see, you know, do you want all the indicators or do you only want some of them? Very nice. I like this uh, flexibility that we can change stuff. It's really good to see. So logic, the interface now selectively displays the detection range of the currently selected squadron. So it seems this is for CVs, of course, that makes sense. Um, so now CVs can also see where they spot. Um, interface prompts and actual vision logic are only active during the flight phase of the squadrons. And I really like this. So a flight phase is any time where they're going from point A to point B when they're in the sky, right? They're not in a flight phase when they're taking off. They're not um, in when they're attacking. So they can only spot when they're traveling from point A to point B. So while they're dropping their stuff, they don't actually spot, so that means you're gonna get, you know, if, it, if a DD is getting attacked by Haku, you're gonna see them coming towards the DD, then all of a sudden it, they're gonna go undetected. Um, the DD, you can't see him anymore. So that's pretty nice. Um, it's a step in the right direction. And see here, when squadrons are in other states, such as taking off, attacking, or returning. Oh, also when returning, nice. The interface detection range is hidden, but the, tech, the detection logic remains active. So on the way back, they don't spot. Big dub. Big fucking dub, Wargaming. That is really nice. Wow. <laughs> Maybe we can actually play DD now. Ooh. Uh, fighter squadrons now have circle detection ranges, while other squadrons have sector. So fighters are the only ones that have a circle. I don't know why, but I guess balancing. Detection range and angles of squadrons will expand the, the increase in the tier of warships. Okay, so it, it exponentially goes up uh, the higher the tier. I guess that makes sense. This change primarily aims to weaken the vision detection capabilities of aircraft carriers. Yes, exactly. As a result, the detection range of aircraft carrier squadrons has been reduced by a range of 30 to 50%. Okay. So they, they spot way less now. They also just flat out decrease the spotting range of all planes. This is awesome. So these changes were made in response to player feedback and to ensure more balanced battles. These changes are not final and will continue to make further adjustments based on the data and player feedback to refine the player experience. Yes! <laughs> How long did this take, Wargaming? How long? Oh, this is amazing. I'm really excited for this. And I've known this for a while, all the CC have had, had, but, you know, this is good stuff. I'm really excited for this. And I also think this is fair. I don't think this fucks up the CV players at all. If, if we have CV players crying over this, that is indeed skill issue, because th these are fair changes, and this is going to be healthy for the game. Everybody's going to benefit from this. So I think there's going to be some collaborations with Warhammer. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go too much into this. We have Popeye as well. I like this one. That's a that's a cool one, you know, Popeye with the spinach. And there's some awesome new stuff here. Commander voice modification. Customize your experience with the introduction of the commander voice modifications. So it seems that you can change your voice over commands. Um, when it's set to standard, in-game battle sounds and quick commands will be default to the standard audio. So there's commanders with voiceover. So I'm guessing like if there's a Warhammer commander, right? If he's like a special character in Warhammer, he's probably going to get a voiceover that you can then 
you know, switch between that or the default voiceovers. Um, default battle sounds in the game have been standardized to male, irrespective of their player's avatar gender. Oh, ho, 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 that's pretty fucking based, Wargaming. <laughs> that's pretty based. Okay, you know, good to see that they're not scared of the uh, woke agenda. That's really nice, because I think this is just to st streamline everything. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it doesn't That didn't need to change. I don't know why, but it's still... I think it's pretty cool that they changed it to that. I don't know why. There's probably going to be some comments about that. But, I mean, come on. It's a video game. In instances where voice modification is set to the commander's name non-standard, the selected commander's voice will override default in-game battle sounds and quick commands. So that does that mean you don't have any sounds when you have a voice over, you know, special guy? That sounds a little dumb. Um, quick commands also would be kind of nice to have. Additional voice com command voiceovers. Um... Players who have previously acquired Warhammer 40,000 commanders will automatically gain. Okay, so if you have a commander, one of these commanders, you will get a voiceover guy. I have some. That's pretty cool. The update introduces the voices of Popeye and Bluto. <laughs> Schedule for in June. I don't know who Bluto is, but cool, I guess. New, new cosmetics, you know, there's some stuff here. We're going to look at the daily rewards. So you can get the premium cruiser Katori in June um, and a midway portrait. Katori is kind of meh. But what is really good, guys, Jesse Oldendorf, this is one of the best commanders in the game. Um, just basically because he flat out increases your your dispersion and your damage. So in July, you better log in every day to get this guy. It is so worth it, guys. So yeah, very nice to see. Yeah, we got some frames, summer solstice. I'm not going to go through this. You guys can do that whenever it comes. Okay, titles, top tier player. Why are you giving top tier player out to everybody? It says from a gift package. It seems like it's everybody's gonna get this. Oh wait, I think I think this is from the um the survey. I'm this might be the, the survey reward. I think it is. Okay, then it's fair that it's top tier, because everybody who did the survey is a top tier player in my opinion. Patriot, pretty cool one, I like that. Atlantic Raider. I like that. Atlantic Raider. If you're playing a German German ship a lot, you know, this is this is the one you gotta have. All right, new tech line editions. So we're going to get the second part of the Spanish cruisers. We got the Mendez Nunez, the Almirante Severa, the Baleares, and Cataluna, and Castilla. So Castilla, obviously, is the one I'm waiting for. You're going to get videos whenever they come out, guys. Trust me, that is... I'm, I'm really excited for this line, so don't worry. There's going to be content. We're going to get the Premium Cruiser Oregon City, um, and this is... An Oregon class heavy cruiser. And um, there's probably gonna be pictures up when I'm post editing this so you guys can see. The French battleship Picardy. Picardy? Picardy. We're gonna call him Picardy. And it's a. Uh, okay, shift toward a caliber of 370, 380. However, naval guns of this caliber were not yet accessible in France. As a solution, engineers opted to increase the number of small caliber guns with the final design featuring as many as 16 guns placed in four turrets. Classic French. So new tier 8 French battleship. Oh, we get this shill. This this, this thing's pretty cool. This is a, a pocket battleship or a Graf Spee, but a, just a tier 8. So, very nice. We get the premium battleship Alvaro de Bassan. I'm pretty sure this is a destroyer, but yeah, I'm... You'll see that with the picture. You can fi figure out for yourself if you think it's a destroyer or a battleship. Rhode Island, this thing is a nutty thing like Florida at tier 10, ba basically. So that one's going to be hell, I think. Black Audacious. We're going to skip over that. Black Fletcher, going to go over that as well. I don't really care about those. And we're going to see some epic commanders. Okay, we got Talon here with aerobatic maneuver. So that's a CV guy. Demo expert. Helios. It sounds like a... Um, Oh, that's probably the Warhammer guys. I was just about to say it sounds like a sounds like a Greek god. Torpedo alert tweeting. Artillery maintenance, victorious charge, Bluto general. These are some pretty boring commanders, I would say. But this one right here, we got a legendary one, Theodore Edson Chandler. He's got battlefield support, ma artillery maintenance, victory charge, fully prepared, inertia fuse, high explosive, okay, honor seeker. Interesting. So that's about it. We got some more collection books. Gonna go a little bit above this. We over this. We got Atl Battle of the Atlantic, Battle of Midway. Very cool battles. So obviously, if you're a history buff, like most of us are, this is gonna be cool. If you can end up, you know, completing this, 
We got even more uh, collection books with the Blitz Squad. We're gonna go over that as well. I don't really care too much about that. This is interesting, the friend referral rework. So we're excited to introduce a revamped friend referral system with the improved accessibility and rewards. Players above level 10 will now encounter two tabs upon entering the event. The friend level up track, where you earn referral points and unlock rewards as your friends, as your invited friends level up. And then the invitee count track. Okay, so it, you know, you can rise in levels and I guess there's some better rewards. All right. Fault line and Atlantic maps. So guys, we, we haven't had these maps for a while. What are they going to do with those? The domination maps for fault line and the Atlantic have been added to the following game modes. Okay, so we're going to see these again, but not as base capture, only as domination maps. I guess that's cool. I like that. Blitz pass multi-level unlock. So this is already something we've had. Uh, the multi-level purchase players can now purchase multiple levels at once via the level purchase interface. Oh, okay, so this is one if you want to skip the Blitz Pass, if you're not going to complete it, which, guys, I urge you not to spend gold in the Blitz Pass to get levels, because it, it doesn't take a lot to complete the missions, and it's just a waste of your gold. But it's your money, your gold, you can do whatever you want. Just a tip from me, don't do that. Um, And some more stuff here. This I'm not going to go too much into the Blitz Pass here. I want to more look at the bug fixes and the balancing change. Addressed an issue where unlocked portraits would persist across player account switches, leading to confusion and the inability to utilize search and portraits. Okay, interesting. Corrected the secondary gun's turret rotation angle for American Battleship Louisiana and to ensure optimal performance and gameplay balance. All right. So, good to see them fix bugs. I like that. Lucian, though. Um, Lucian's getting a pretty gnarly buff. Um, she's got an HP increase. Uh, what's that that's yeah an 800 an 800 hp increase and then she's got faster torpedoes now she gets an engine accelerator 2 instead and she gets wait air defense alert 2, two change to torpedo reload 2 wait so <laughs> yeah lucian might be crazy now red told me that they buffed it and um yeah they, you're right sonar 2 remains unchanged i like that we got the french battleship getting buffed so they're getting fire chance increase all the way up to the black republic and the normal republic so all the french battleships it seems except the Champ champagne the champagne and maybe the new one the picardy they're getting a fire he sorry he um increase it seems to me increased chance of setting fire that must mean the he right so they're gonna be good he spammers now <laughs> All right, so what's next? User interface changes. Yeah, they're going to do a massive UI change. So guys, get ready for that. And um, if you remember last time, don't don't go, you know, thinking the world's going to end because the UI changed. They actually have a tendency to be good at listening. And last time we had a change in the UI and a lot of people weren't happy. They actually made a alternative. So I'm, I can't wait to see this. I like the UI change last. I'm not a, not, you know, hating it. So cool. And more player surveys. So we're thrilled to announce that the player surveys, surveys are already underway. The direct channel provides you with the opportunity to share your valuable feedback directly with our team. Your input is instrumental in guiding our decisions and prioritizing improvements across various aspects of the game. Participating in these surveys allow you to have a direct impact on shaping the future of the game. Cool. We'll be so okay. I like this. They're making the, they're making the first changes soon, and they're gonna you know based on our feedback this is like every other game company does so good job <laughs> good, good job i like this and they're gonna be more cat collaborations i am there's gonna be movie anime and, and games so we're gonna see some more collabs and one of the most anticipated tech lines is on the horizon and we can hardly contain our excitement can you guess which one it will be keep your eyes peeled for more hints and teasers as we prepare to unveil these this exciting addition i have no clue what this is when they're saying the most anticipated tech line, I'm like, I, I can think of there's the, the, the Japanese battle cruisers coming out. What are we, what else are we missing? Yeah, interesting. Well, that is going to be it for this video, guys. I will say right now, I am very excited, very pleased with this. I think Wargaming did a massive win on this, a W here. And uh, this is very good to see. It gives me hope for the future. And I can't wait to play with the new aircraft carrier spotting and i'm hoping that they're gonna take the next next step and for example fix dive bombers change them i actually think if we have this good spotting mechanics that, they're, that are balanced and good dive bombing mechanics that are skill based instead of 
RNG based, I think we're going to have a pretty good game, actually. We're going to have a more fun, balanced experience. So yeah, looking forward to that. If you guys watch my uh, patch note video, I appreciate it. Uh, sorry for being a little bit late. I will see you guys in not too long because I'm going to be streaming today. So uh, yeah, my name has been Bubloon, aka Pavloon, and I'm signing out. See you later, guys.